Hello humans, Master Dinner Flex here, and today I'll be going over a requested deck of Battling Boxers. Now, uh, I've played against the deck way back in the day a lot, and all they were was summon, crap I can't remember his name, Yoke, and just hope that would get them there. And back, way back in 2013, that was actually kind of reliable, because there were very few non-destructive ways of removing stuff. But nowadays, that's like a joke. This card will never do on its own. However, I started working up with some theories, and I kind of got some ideas and solutions for that problem. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the deck, and uh, ho I'll explain some of my theories with the deck real quick. This deck, uh, I've done... I've done a decent amount of testing, and it's pretty good. Uh, I would say some of the cards in here you don't really need. I just like in here. So let's go ahead and get into it. Three headgear, the Armageddon Knight of the Archetype, and he also can't be destroyed by battle once. He's okay, but he's a very slow opening. Um, yeah, you just kind of need him regardless. You really do just need him. Um, switch hitter. The Delteros, or Wolf Bark, I guess. He's really good. Um, you can only summon Battle in Boxers that turn. Special summon Battle in Boxers uh, that turn. But it doesn't matter. He gets him an attack too, which is actually really nice. You could deal a lot of damage with him. Um, three Glassjaw. Uh, he's really just big... Um, there's not much to say about him. When he's sent by a card effect, mainly your Armageddon Knight, you can, uh... <sighs> shit. You can, uh, grab back a guy from your graveyard to your hand, which is kind of hard to set up, and it's really only a late game thing. But the 2,000 attack, the zero defense, and the fact that he's just the easiest thing to send is what makes him so good. Then we got three Spar, um, which is really hard to say. Uh, he's just like a hat tricker, really. Um, it's really weird that it says you cannot conduct your battle phase for the rest of the turn. So if you want to push for damage, you can, and then just in main phase two summon him. Uh, I actually do remember that about this stack, and I always thought that was really kind of pointless to even put that on the card, but it is what it is, I guess. Um, this one's actually I really like a lot. Two battle in Boxer Shadow, um... You can detach a material to special summon him from the hand from a battle in boxer monster. So, I'm not just going lead yoke turbo if I don't open a card you're about to see. Um, I'll go Nova Kaiser most of the time, and this one's really good for setup. He's he's already pretty big on himself, um, and you can just set up two warriors, and that can make his old or uh, do little. I actually really like this guy. He helps push for damage. 1800 over 14 is pretty decent stats. And uh, this is a lot of stun in this stack already. So, seems pretty good. Uh, one Veil. This actually seems terrible. I'm probably going to take it out for the third of the next card you're about to see. Alright. This card I need to do some explaining over. So, one thing I noticed about the deck is that it loses to monster effects so much. Like, the spells and traps, not really an issue. But monster effects, it can't deal with. That's why I have the full Solemn Package in here. Even though this can't stop monster effects, it can stop their summons. It, you lose to a lot of things, including monsters. And what, uh, I'm going to call him Ganesh, even though they don't have him there. Because that's what he should be. Cultural appropriation. Anyways, so... Ganesh with uh, Lead Yoke allows you to make a really interesting setup where if your opponent tries to use a monster effect to out the Lead Yoke, you can negate it and then uh, Ganesh will destroy Lead Yoke and Lead Yoke, instead of being destroyed, will just get bigger. So that's actually really cool. I actually really like that interaction with the deck. This card's already at 1900, uh, 1800 attack, 19 with the tanky, so he's not getting beat over by everything, and that's just really cool. Um, I was gonna play, uh, 
fire dogs in here because uh, not only could you summon this, but you could summon Glassjaw. But that was a little gimmicky, and I didn't want to depend too much on the battle phase, which this deck already does a lot of. Uh, and finally, for the reptile uh, toolbox, we got one Kaje to Kaje, or Cage to Cage, as I like to say. Uh, one Mask Chameleon, obviously, for Glassjaw. And then this one is my own personal tech, uh, Evil Dragon and Tanta, and uh, it's kind of weak to set up at first, but it's a good late game card, because if you have a lot of reptiles, then it can get up there, but usually you're only making King of the Feral Lamps search this if you need it, and just banish them to summon it. It'll be weak, but at the end phase it guarantees... Uh, the out, and if you have Solemns to protect this, then it's like, it can keep going and going. And if your opponent leaves nothing on the field for it, you can always destroy Lidio and get it a boost. Uh, for the spells, three Desires, you have a lot of redundancy in the deck, so you don't really need to worry about uh, Desires banishing combo pieces. I actually, so there's a lot of decks I don't like Desires in, and I don't feel comfortable playing it in, but this is not one of them. This is actually a deck where you just want to see more cards. Especially since the fact that you have three spirits, two Circle of the Fire Kings, and one Reborn. You have six revival cards to make sure you get there with uh, headgear. So, that's awesome. Circle of the Fire Kings. Now, it does. It's a, it is a really a neg one trade-off. But the amount of damage you can actually do with this card is absurd. Um, I have, in playtesting, OTK'd someone just with Circle of the Fire Kings. Uh, and this can revive very weird things, too. Like, um, it doesn't just depend on battle and boxers. You can destroy, like, uh, Glassjaw, get, uh, Ganesh, and then use Glassjaw's effect. You can, uh, I, I was even trying to find a reptile, uh, reptile, uh, uh, what's it called? A reptile fire? But it turns out it's either Evoltiles or the really shitty attribute one, which... I might go over one day in a video. Um, so yeah, that's it's actually really good in here. It's it's really gimmicky, and you don't have to play it. It's kind of win more, but I, I find it good. I think you should like it. And then Reborn, to act as the sixth revival card. Uh, I was going to put in Soul Charge, too, but I realized if you're going to draw like three revival cards and no way to send stuff to the grave, you're just going to lose. Um... Then two tanky search, uh, Ganesh. I'd rather play two tanky, two Ganesh than three and one, because uh, it dex thins. So yeah, one Rota. Uh, the most the main core is fire. I mean warriors. Foolish. You got a lot of revival, like I said. Dark hole, which your yoke is immune to. I believe so. Hold on. Yeah, it's immune too. I don't know why I play this against this deck so much. I can't believe I forgot that. And then Rajiki, because like I said earlier, your deck has a really tough time dealing with monsters outside of the battle phase. So you really need these cards in here. And then for the traps, three strike, because again, monsters. Warning, again, monsters. Again, monsters with judgment. Side deck, doesn't matter. Um, I didn't even bother making a side deck, because uh, if I were to make a side deck, it would ruin the budget aspect of this deck, because this deck... The main and extra probably cost less than a hundred dollars, and that's actually really cool. So, extra two lead yoke, probably why this deck ever did anything ever. Like, I don't even think it topped events, but the reason it was playable was because of this card. And back in the day, that's a lot, but now with Ganesh, you can kind of help it. Uh, two Nova Kaiser instead of one because, uh, I play two shadow and it allows you to make links. Uh, the Utopia package also allows you to make his old day. Uh, this card's actually terrible, but it's a battle and boxer. This could probably be something else. Probably the most expensive card in here outside of Regeki. And then we got King of the Feral Imps for the uh, Reptile Toolbox. Uh, Baguska, because it's unfair. It's old. Search a Warrior. I uh, give you two open zones. Dual little chimeric. I like how it said dual little. I can't believe that that's their name change. Uh, all your decks fire. Um, 
It also is kind of interesting that uh, if Ganesh dies, it can uh, revive that. Um, which, it, it's it, I guess, could come up one day, but it, it's whatever. And then Decode Talker for the Link 3s, and it's helpful to beat over big things. And for the Synchros with Mass Chameleon, you got Omega and Stardust. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um... This has actually been kind of a fun deck, uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it obviously isn't that great, but it's been really fun, and it's got some decent toolbox. So yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you all for watching, and remember, Master Dinnerflax will take your soul.